Welcome to the Put On Waivers Media Group, home of the Put On Raiders podcast and the Student Body Right podcast. This is your place for the best breakdowns and the best insight for those who fight on and bleed silver and black. Now, here are your hosts, Dwayne Douglas and Ryan Holmes. So, we can, we, we, we can start. I don't think we have anything else on the Charger game, right? The Charger game, I mean, the, the coaches got fired. It was fired. fun. <laughs> it, it, it was fun. Um, the, the, coaches, the coach got fired. Um, who knows? Um, I know some some people wrote, some people are writing um, some people are writing articles about that how how coveted the job is, and then you know, other people were, other people were like writing articles saying, "Hey, like let's look at look at the salary cap, look at other look at other things that go on with the with the Chargers. Maybe it's not um, a great job, but um, what, what, what but they have money issues, so we'll so we'll so we'll see. I mean, they also you know do they want to pay do they want to pay a coach? Um, you know that's that's like kind of one of the biggest things there was a joe joanna um josina anderson article um tweet today i don't know if you saw that one where um was it ben ben johnson ben johnson is wanting he wants he wants to go out he wants the bag huh 15 mil never 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 <laughs> never been a head coach ever when i want to want 15 mil that's interesting that would turn me to another direction i don't know about you and, that, and, that, and that's true that would make, lead me to believe his agent like that, and his agent yes. already has an inkling of what Carolina is willing to pay, and he's yes. probably just getting that out there, saying because he don't want to go to Carolina. Obviously, that, that's a violation <laughs> of the Rooney Rule. They can't just come out and say we have an offer from a team, but like yeah. that's probably just the agent hyping it up. There's not a lot of offensive candidates. I know everyone's like, go get the young offensive hotshot. There's not a lot left. Like no. the McVay and Shanahan trees have been picked clean for the last four or five hiring cycles. The, the better candidates are actually defensive candidates. If you want that young hot shot, you're going to have to go pay for it. And Ben Johnson, um, by all accounts, is the leading horse in that race right now. And, and by all accounts, he's a, he's a North Carolina native. Uh, Tampa, or not Tampa, Carolina wanted to hire him last year, and it sounds like they're going to go all in and try to get him again this year. Yeah, unless you're looking at, um, you know, Clint Kubiak and and Chris Foster, who who uh, were the OCs in um, – with the Niners, um, I mean those those guys are there. And then let me just pick on see what we see what McVay, see what McVay got uh, in his tree. Raheem Morris is not. And then you got Mike Lafleur has OC. So if you want to go another, you want to add another Lafleur to the mix, you can go ahead and you go ahead and do that if you want. But um, it's 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 slim pickings on the offensive side, like we said. Um, Raiders, Chiefs, gonna surprise everybody with my pick at the end. But um, this is. If you're trying to win over, you want to, you want to trying to win over a um, a a owner to sway an owner to make you to give you opportunity to to win a, a job to be the head coach. Um, this this would be this would be one of the games. I mean, even if they won this game and just went one and one in the last two, I think that might sway them enough because the Chiefs have just been such a nuisance for the Raiders to 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 deal with. Not going to be an easy game, but you know if. If they're gonna, if it's you kind of, if you're the Raiders, I mean, you kind of want a bad weather game. You know, you, you don't want you don't want this guy to be throwing the ball deep deep, deep down the field, um, things like that. But what are your thoughts? Of, initial thoughts about the Raiders facing the um, the Chiefs on Monday and Christmas? I'm not sure I want a bad weather game because I don't know if this Raiders team's gonna be able to run the football against the Chiefs when they need to, um, and hopefully they don't turn the ball over. So it, it does help take the air out of the ball from on the Patrick Mahomes side, but I think mm-hmm. the Raiders offense needs to be able to throw the football uh, to score points. I don't think they can just rely on the running game right now to, to hand it off four or five, six times in a row and start moving the ball down the field. But I do think it's almost like this is the opportunity for Antonio Pierce to have his Heisman moment. Like all the Heisman trophy okay. winners have that moment. moment yeah. Okay, this now he's going to win it. This is his moment. Yeah. He has to go on the road in Kansas City and find a way to win this game. If he doesn't, um, and we look back at, at the end of the year, we say, okay, he beat uh, a Giants team that, you know, Daniel Jones got hurt in the first quarter and it was the first sighting of Tommy DeVito. Um, he beat a Jets team with Jack, uh, Zach Wilson, and then he beat the Easton Stick-led minus Keenan Allen Chargers teams, and those are the wins he, he has in his pocket. I don't think that's good enough. Mm-hmm. So he needs to have a – a resume building win 
where he can take it to the owner and say, look, I did this. I went on the road. I went in there. The Raiders have had a bad luck with Kansas City for the longest time. If he can beat the Chargers, and I know it was Easton Stick, but he didn't beat the Chargers. He embarrassed the Chargers. If he can go on the road and beat the Chiefs, and then if he can beat the Broncos at the end of the year, he can walk into Mark Davis's office and say, we have to win this division. We need to go through the division. I just showed you I can do that. Yeah, He needs this game. After yeah, the Vikings game, yes. he needs this game. He needs, he needs to make everybody forget they got shut out at home with two weeks to two weeks to prepare. I mean, because and and this game would actually would would erase my memory. I would be like, I get my little pen like in black and men in black and just be like that, and boom, I'd be I'd be like, oh, what that didn't happen. I mean, th- that that's what you would need um, in this moment, because 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 like it has it, it has to happen. So like this team is not. This is a very good Chiefs team. It is not a great Chiefs team. Um, you can do the, the, you can do things to slow it down. I understand it's going to be hard because you're dealing with you know the officials. We're dealing with all the other stuff that goes on. We're playing them. We're playing them in their in their in their in their building. Um, but like they did lose a bunch of games at home this year. Um, so and 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 they're not putting teams away in their building. So. If you can hang around, I know people are going to say, oh, but he doesn't have an OC. Oh, but he doesn't have a quarterback. But the same people were telling me, oh, you know, give him, give AOC a chance next year. Well, but I thought they didn't have a quarterback. So why are we giving him a chance next year? So um, you, you, you can't kind of pick your fight as far as that goes. But I like, I mean, I think the Raiders have a chance to win the, to win the game. I think they have more than a 25% chance to win this game. Um, and I think for him, whatever – you know, game planning that he needs help with to pull off an upset. Um, you know, his mentor Tom Coughlin is the king of pulling off upsets. He pulled off a bunch of them in his in his career. Um, you got to find a way to get that done because this is this is a team where like you know this is a, this is a Raider, Raider, Raider squad that does have a lot of offensive weapons and defensively they've been playing really well this year and they just got to get the ball to the, to these playmakers and see what can happen. Yeah, and I think it's going to come down to the Raiders have to stop the run in this game. If the field conditions are going to be as bad as they are, they, they have to dominate the line of the scrimmage. The, the the advantage the Chiefs are going to have is those interior three guys they have, so um, left guard, center, right guard, they're really good run blockers. Um, so in the Raiders' weakness defensively is the defensive tackles in the run game. So I, I think the bad weather neutralizes Max Crosby's pass rush, Max Malcolm Coons coming off the edge. Um, and then it really – the pressure falls on the, the defensive tackles and the linebackers of, of that Raiders group to be able to stop the run. And then obviously they have to get off the field on third down. But I, I think offensively it goes to the – the Chiefs have the advantage too um, if the Raiders can't throw the ball if the, if the conditions are bad because they're, they're not a good run-blocking team. Mm-hmm. So, all, you know, using the speed, the motions, and trying to create all these matchups, they're just going to have to lace up their shoes and, and – play big boy football in this game now it does look like colt miller is going to be back andre james was at practice today so it looks like they should be at full strength along the offensive front but it, but that hasn't james, been a great run blocking team all year if, if james is back is that full strength uh, we like <laughs> I, I would have stuck with parham <laughs> yeah um, personally me too. me too um i thought meredith was was okay um he was he was fine in the game against the chargers but we'll see we'll see what happens i i I think I know where you're going this game. I might be going the other direction. We'll see. Maybe we have a a disagreement here uh, at the end when we do our game predictions. But it's going to come down to turnovers, ball security, maybe a bad snap on special teams if the the rain keeps up. But whatever it comes down to, there's a lot of coaches in this league that can say, well, I don't have a quarterback. I don't have an offensive coordinator. I don't think those are excuses for Antonio Pierce because half the teams in the league can say that. Yeah. Yeah, that's the best. That's the, that's the best way to put it. That's the best way to put it. Everybody, you, you, I mean, and that's the case. What do you? What am I paying you for? I mean, and and why? And like, are you saying that you're not going to try because 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 you don't have those things? You have to have the best quarterback in in football. So, um, in or in, in in order to compete, um, uh, not a lot of teams have that. Um, as far as as and far as that my, goes, my comeback to that would be. Okay, so let's say that he doesn't have that and he gets to come back next year and he hires an offensive coordinator and it doesn't work. Do we say, well, do we blame the offensive coordinator until, and we just let him keep hiring him until he finds one? Or at what point does it fall on the head coach 
because it seems like people are just trying to find excuses for certain people who have played for the Raiders or are now coaching for theirs because they like them. And at the end of the day, it's a result business. You have to win. It's, it's just win, baby. It's not just play okay because we like you and we'll figure everything out later. You have to win the football game. Um, so we'll see what happens on Monday. I think that the, I think it's I think it's what we're seeing now is, and the, you're seeing it all across Twitter. You're seeing it all about maybe a lot with with, gener, with with like fans now is it's a generational thing where they will say when a quarterback wins, it's like look what he overcame, and then if a quarterback loses, oh, but look what he's playing with. Like they may, it's, it's, it's like a built-in excuse like all the time. We've seen it. I'm, I'm, I won't bring up his name, but like we, we we've heard about that for from Rare Nation. We've heard of that. We're still hearing about it. Yeah, you're still hearing about it right now. Like even like even like even 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 the, even when the, even the team he's on now, people people are still giving him excuses, even though the team is freaking loaded. So, um, but like I mean, but not only just him, but other quarterbacks. I hear the same kind of stuff, and it's just like stop making excuses for these for these moments. Like there is there are moments in these games where like. People are open. Like, are is he getting the ball to where it needs to go, or does he, or, or are they making the plays that they need to make in order to win this game for the for the team for you know the the, the the coaches in this league? Like, you know, there was a play to be made at the end of the of the Seattle Seahawks game and the Philadelphia Eagles, and guess who made it? This the Seahawks made it. A coach who seems like he always wins, <laughs> and and is one of the um, better quarter, better coaches in the league, um, Pete Carroll. His team found the way to do it. His, his team finds a way to do it, like a, a lot, a lot of the time. So, like those things aren't just like anomalies. There, those are trends that that the, that these coaches and these quarterbacks in, in in certain situations always seem to come through in, in these moments. You can't keep making excuses for what they don't have. Well, let's assume he had an offensive coordinator. If you have a good one, you're probably going to lose him in the next two or three years, anyways. If you have success with a rookie quarterback and develop him, so. Um, we could very easily be looking two or three years back now and saying, well, he doesn't have enough offensive coordinator and got to go find another one. So yeah. um, I'm rooting for AP. I want them to win this game. I would love it if he ended up getting the job, but I'm not just going to blindly say, well, just give him the job, just give it to him. Like he needs to go out and earn it. And and if he, if he got the job, the likelihood is a very strong likelihood that he's going to have a first time play caller as his OC, unless he went to the way back machine and got somebody like Adam Gase. Like it's gonna be a first time play caller. And do you want somebody who's been out of football for a little bit um to come back and start calling plays again? Like maybe that's maybe Adam Gates would be great at that. Who knows? But like the, the game the game changes year to year, much less three or four years. So like, you know, I kind of want somebody who's in the game, who's in the sport right now, but then you're you're talking about going to, you know, a quarterback, like you're talking about getting a quarterback coach from another team who most likely will be your new offensive coordinator because that's how it works i mean <laughs> i mean or you know i mean it's, 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 that, it's that simple i think i i actually lean the other way i think if he gets the job he is going to hire a Better. former ex head coach that's been around that can help mentor him whether that's jim caldwell david shaw like you're probably looking at a guy who has called plays but just hasn't done it in the nfl in a very long time yeah if it's David Shaw, Michael, I mean, Michael Mayer is going to be the, the leading pass catcher for this team. I can tell you that right now if it's, if, if it's that dude. Because that dude, nobody loves tight ends. We should all love tight ends, though. I love our mamas the way he loves we, tight we, ends. And how you we just got out. done talking about how there's no hot shot offensive coordinators to be head coaches. Now you're talking about you got to go find a college guy or a, a quarterback coach that could be a first-time player. We can't even find the OCs to be head coaches. Where are you going to go find the quarterback coaches that deserve the chance to be first time play callers? And there's no all the, the pressures on AP if he gets the job. Yes, it is. And then, and then you can't go from OC to OC from one team to another. You have to be fired. Like 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 like, like if they fire the whole staff in Washington, Eric Bieniemy could be the Raiders' offensive coordinator if he want if he wanted to if he chose to he might say to himself, "I'm more qualified than a guy you have a head coach. Why am I going to be the offensive coordinator here?" That could, that could be a conversation too as well. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see how that goes. Um, anything else on this? I, game? I would also like to, I, I would also on the Champ Kelly point, because I know a lot of people are pushing for Champ Kelly to get the GM and they assume, and this could be a false assumption, 
yep. that just because Champ Kelly stays, that he loves everyone in the locker room and he's not going to try to to trade guys off and bring in his own guys. How do we know that? How do we know that Champ Kelly mm. wasn't on board with some of the guys on the roster, moved some fan favorites to bring in guys he wants? We don't. People just assume because he's in the building that he's just going to keep everyone that's on the roster as is. I, I don't. I don't think that's 100 percent accurate. No, I don't think so either. I mean, he he might not. He's standing next to AP right now. He might not love AP. Like, I, I, we don't know. As 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 his head coach, we don't we don't know that. So that's a that's a um, valid point as well too. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, it should be a very. This is a huge. I mean, this is. I mean, we we don't say it every single time, but this is a gigantic. This is going to shape the Raiders for years to come this off season. I mean, it really it really is because if they can pull a trick on a quarterback. And it works out, then yes. If it did, they can't pull a trigger on a quarterback, and they end up, you know, doing some, you know, some, you know, Justin Fields shenanigans or, or, um, or Kirk Cousins. Then they have to pull the trigger. You have to do it. Yeah, it's the yeah. only way you're gonna find. What? <laughs> shoot or shoot. <laughs> shoot or you can't shoot. make shots you don't take. So, like, yes. if you don't take shots at a quarterback, you're not gonna have a quarterback. And we know the Raiders haven't yeah. done that, and that's why they're in this position. Yeah, so yeah, the, the 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 whole one and done, the whole the whole the whole like you know living year to year doesn't work anymore. You gotta you gotta, you gotta bite the bullet and take a quarterback. And uh, PP, I know I know people in some Twitter spaces I I go into and just listen. They're like, well, what if it doesn't work? Well, the other way doesn't work at all. So you have we, to live with it if it doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, and you can and like the, the it's not like when Jamarcus or Sam Bradford or those guys were around, you can pivot a little easier. From that now, then you can then then back in the day where you were just stuck with the guy. Suppose I try not to talk. Yeah, to, uh, well, I try to do. We don't, we don't need veterans stop gaps. Develop no, the no. later round guy. Like the no, goal is to win no. Super Bowls. Yes. Go get your go get your guy. Go, 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 yeah, seriously, go get your guy. Um, Raiders, um, Chiefs, Christmas Day. I'm 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 sure everybody. I'm sure everybody. I'm sure every Raider. Um, um family is going to be thrilled i'm sure wives are going to be thrilled that the raiders are on at 10 a.m my wife's Coast. excited when i told her kickoff was at 10 a.m she's like what are you talking about like, <laughs> yeah, so, monday at 10 a.m <laughs> so thrilled so thrilled um what <laughs> um you got a pick for this game what are your final thoughts about the about the ball game as much as i want to jump on the raiders momentum and the shellacking they put on the chargers last week i have to remember it was a short week it was a banged up chargers team I, you don't take the win away from the raiders you you get to celebrate all the wins in the nfl it doesn't matter who played but realistically looking at this the players i think are going to go in and play hard for ap they they want ap um they did it last week i just mm-hmm. don't know if this team's good enough to go on the road in arrowhead in december this game means a lot more for the Chiefs. The Chiefs need this game. They're only a game up on the Broncos. They're fighting to get in position um, in the AFC. They're not they're probably they still have a chance, realistic chance to get to the, the home field throughout the playoffs. It's Patrick Mahomes. I'm just going to make this real simple. The better coach, the better quarterback, probably the better defense. Which team do I trust to run the ball better in this game? We don't know what Josh Jacobs' the status is. As much as I want to take the Raiders in this game, I just can't do it. It's a 10-point spread. Vegas loves the Chiefs in this game. I think the Raiders cover the spread. I'll give them that. But I think at the end of the day, the Chiefs make one or two more plays. Travis Kelsey may get loose. He seems to always do that against the Raiders. I don't know how much Devontae Adams and, and, the, and the weapons outside are going to be a factor in this game. Aiden O'Connell has not played a good game on the road yet. Um, we haven't seen him do what he's done in Allegiant Stadium and take that outside. And now we're talking about in the elements. I know he played at Purdue, some bad weather games, but everything to me points to the Chiefs winning this game. I'm going to take the Chiefs to win this game 24 to 14. 24 14. So I, um, so, I'm gonna go. The, I'm gonna go the other way with it. I'm gonna think. I'm gonna pick the Raiders to win the game. Um, I think that it's they have not. They have not shown anything on the road all season. All season they've been. They're one in five on the. They haven't won a game since week one on the road. One in five. Been and they've been pretty much kind of putrid in all those games. I think they're gonna show out. A, when I say show out, just be really competitive in this ball game. It'll be close throughout the ball game. Um, I'm putting it on. I'm putting it all on the head coach. Just this is you guys want AP. AP is on 
you know, on his social media, you know, re, um, reposting his own videos from rare.com. So like, you know, see, all, all this stuff is there. So like, I mean, you guys want him to be there. You can't be there and be six and nine. You can't be that head coach and be, and, and, and be under 500. You can't, you can't, if you don't have a big staple, like, you know, like Ryan said, Heisman moment, a big win. If you don't have a big win, then you're not in the conversation. And this whole thing where people want to just give it to him and all the stuff like that, because he's a Raider that just, that I don't know what world that you're living in. That's not really reality. That's just like, you have to win football games to actually be the head coach of a football team. Like that's how you, you know, I think, you know, there's a guy who used to own the team who said you can't be a success in natural football league unless you win. So I'm not sure how he can be that way. Um, but to me, like he's, I, I would still, I would still interview him no matter how the season ended um, this year. I think he's, for what he's done for the team as far as, um, you know, bringing them together, all those things like that, being in a tough situation, rallying the troops, I'll give him that respect just so we can go on and go on later on. But they need to be seven and eight after this game is over. They need to win this big game um, to show, the, to, 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 the, to surprise the folks on Christmas um and and go ahead and win it um you know they were they can they O'Connell played pretty well last time they played against this team so the elements will be there that's fine that's football but I think the Raiders win the game um I'm gonna go 27 24 Carlson from Carlson from deep 27 27 24 so they're gonna need some in the rain on the road in the rain in the rain in the rain so I'm I'm putting I'm putting all AP I'm putting, I'm putting all AP and putting all that. If you, this is your coach, and for the folks who want to sprinkle a little AOC stuff in my timeline, like this is your this is a quarterback who we should give a chance to go win the game. Go go win. This is not Tyree Kill's not playing on this team anymore. Like you know what I'm saying? Like they don't have the McCall Hart. They don't have all this other stuff. They have McCall. They don't have the old school whatever whatever to get things going. I like I I I don't love the Raiders in this game, but like. I'm picking them to win this game because they need to go out there and show that they can beat a quality opponent and a quality and, and a quality and, and a quality quarterback. I do think if they win this game, it would be a great Christmas because my over six and a half will cash. So I will have that yes. going for me. So I will be rooting for the Raiders yeah, to win yeah. this game, although I picked the Chiefs uh, to win it. But yeah, I, I think I have a tough time seeing them scoring 27, to be honest, on the road in, the, in those conditions. Sloppy turnovers. On the run again. I'm, 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 I'm like, you can't depend on turnovers. You can't depend on sloppiness. But, like, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. I'm, that's, that's what my mindset is about that. But I just, they got to I, – I just I just don't want to – after this point, if they lose this game, I, I, AP is like – I will, like I said, I'll pay him the respect and give him an interview if I'm the owner. But I, I'm done. I'm done with AP after that if they, if they lose this game. Got show me something. Yeah, they're gonna have they're gonna have to get off the field on third down. Mahomes is more of a a throw it underneath, let his guys make plays this year um, yep. because they don't have the explosives down the field. And the Raiders defense is more designed take away explosives, give up underneath. They didn't tackle very well uh, in the game in Vegas, so the Raiders are gonna have to tackle much better on defense yep. to get off the field and hopefully get to get to Mahomes and force some turnovers. But first, they, they have to put their big boy pants on and stop the run uh, in this game, and, and we'll see what happens. I think it'll, like I said, I think they'll cover, and we'll see what happens at the end of the day, and yeah. hopefully they win. I, yeah. I'd like to yeah. see the Raiders win out. Yeah. I still don't think they make the playoffs, even if they win out. There's just too many teams ahead of them. No, and um, the con- conference – Five their conf- or six teams. Yeah, and their conference record isn't, isn't the best either. So, And I think also, too, you talk about three and outs. The Raiders can't have three and outs in this game. They have to – they have to get they have to get first downs first downs early in the ball game. Um, they they they've done good jobs in the first quarters in some of these games, but they they kind of got to do it, they got to kind of do it throughout the game in order to have a real chance to win it. So we'll see what happens. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. They lose this one. I think I think this one they're gonna they're gonna go six. Then you 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 I think they they lose this game. I think your I think your number your your cash out might might they might be in jeopardy. It might be in jeopardy. We'll see. We'll see. But, but, we'll but see the, what happens in the, the last week of the season. <laughs> Broncos. Could you imagine the, the drama in that fourth quarter for that one? I mean, at, at this <laughs> point, yeah, let's assume that they lose this week and then it comes down to that last week. If I lose my bet and they gain two spots in the draft order, I'm willing to pay that for a quarterback. I will <laughs> sacrifice my well, yes. my Vegas yeah, right winnings for the Raiders to get a quarterback. A quarterback. No question. All right, Ray Nation, we're out. Um,
um, take care. Have a great holiday season. Um, you know, with family and everything like that. And you know, don't don't drink too much eggnog. I haven't had eggnog in like ten years. So I have no idea what it tastes like now. Probably, but probably tastes worse. It's gross. Um, <laughs> all right, Ray Nation, take care. But well, usually, the, I, I would add real quickly. Usually, yeah. the day after Christmas, everyone runs to the store and, and, and returns the items they don't want. It's Mark Davis returning um, an interim head coach come Monday. We'll talk about that on the next episode. Yes, yes. It's, it, could, it could be. He could, <laughs> could, could, could be. He could be. He could be. Could be doing that. Could be doing it at halftime. The way they do the, 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 the way the Raiders play an Arrowhead. All right. Peace. All right. Take care. Great pass play for Washington. Penix going far side. And so Dante Revenge. Penix going deep. First half is Penix, heaves it down into the end zone.